playing Quadcopter 101 here, and today's shout-out goes to Andy Brown. Andy was first to say first in one of my recent videos, and thus wins this shout-out, so congratulations! Well, here in Erie, PA, sometimes you just can't fly outdoors. So what do you do on a day like today? You fly indoors. And that's the subject of today's flight, the JJRC H111. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here with a review of the new JJRC H111. Well, it's winter in Erie, folks, as I showed you there. And what do you do in the wintertime when you want to fly? Well, there's lots of these great toy drones, these beginner learn-to-fly drones that are out there. Uh, today, we're reviewing the JJRC H111, but there are other, other others out there that are just as worthy for indoor flying. And we're going to demonstrate here shortly. Now, what do I like about the JJRC? There's a couple things I like about this H111. First off, it comes with this really nice carrying case slash controller. It's both a carrying case and a controller. Let me show you that, folks. Um, you pop off the top of the carrying case, put it over here, and slide the drone upward. Now, this is not a battery. I'll talk about this here shortly. And um, it removes the drone, and it, it'll be, it is a foldable drone for portability. And let's open it up to show you that. And we can see the drone in its unfolded state. And let me put a battery in here because I'm going to be flying in here shortly. And I've got to remember, this is the one that I charged. I haven't charged that one yet. But there it is, folks. Now, let's talk about uh, the controller. I mentioned this thing here. This is not a battery. What is it? This is what holds your phone. It's the uh, phone holder for the controller. Now, to remove this, don't pull it out. What you need to do is twist it counterclockwise and then remove it, okay? It's held in place by twisting. So don't go pulling it out. You'll break it. And then you can insert it in the top here where it belongs to hold your phone. Insert it and then turn clockwise. So, and remove it by counterclockwise. So remember that, folks. When you if you get this, don't go try to pull this out. It just just twist it gently counterclockwise, and it'll be removed. So that's the control. Let's move it over here. I'll talk about that here shortly. Let's go into the drone itself. Talking about the drone. Now it's a little micro drone, as you can see here. Totally suited for flying indoors. Uh, it weighs only 76 grams with the battery inserted. So this, you know, if you do fly it outdoors, it does not require registration in most countries. Now, additional thing about this drone is this little sensor right here. I don't know if it's showing up or not, but that's its optical flow sensor. This has optical flow capability. That's the other thing I like about this drone in addition to its carrying case. Optical flow makes it easy for beginner flyers, folks. What this little camera does is looks directly below the drone, and based on what it sees, it automatically maintains the position of the drone in hover without you needing to do that with the controller, manually needing to do that with the controller. With a lot of other drones, you have to uh, hold it in place with the controller. This one should automatically just hover in place, and we'll see if that actually works when we fly it here in the indoor flight test facility. <laughs> but uh, that's what I like about it. Uh, optical flow systems, if they work, are really uh, adv advantageous for beginner pilots. So keep that in mind, folks. Um, other things about the drone. It is powered by a 3.7 volt. Well, I'll leave that one in there. But this is the other battery. 3.7 volt, 1800 milliamp per hour battery. Um, is this really 1800 milliamp per hour? Let me look. It says 1800 milliamp per hour battery. So... I'm assuming that's true, but it seems, I don't know if that's really true, folks. It seems a little small to me to be an 1800 milliamp per hour, but we'll assume that it is. Now, with this battery, they're also claiming 20 minutes of flight time. Um, I have, a, I'm kind of hesitant to believe that too, but we'll find out when we fly it here shortly in the indoor flight test facility. <laughs> now, um, it comes with one battery or spare battery. The spare battery is only $5 more. I recommend getting the spare battery if you do decide to purchase this drone because getting the spare battery separately afterwards will be pretty hard to do So, <laughs> because of uh, shipping restrictions of uh, LiPo batteries, okay? Their safety uh, shipping restrictions. So you want to get this bundled with the package if you do buy it, buy this particular drone if you need an extra battery. And I recommend doing it. It's only $5 more. Um, other things about the drone. It has capabilities of altitude hold. That means it will automatically maintain altitude of the drone uh, using a barometric sensor, or actually pressure sensor, air pressure sensor inside here. It has headless mode capability, which enables it you to fly the drone, beginners to fly the drone uh, easily. It doesn't matter which orientation the drone is pointed. If you push forward, the drone will go off in one direction only. You, know, you can even fly sideways or backwards uh, using... Uh, headless mode capability. Okay, that's again for beginner pilots who 
uh, get confused about orientation of the drone, which way the drone is pointed. Um, it doesn't matter when you're in headless mode. It also has flip capability. It enables you to do 360 degrees flips, uh, stunts, by just merely pressing a button on the controller and telling it which direction to flip. This will do it. Okay, other things about it. It has auto takeoff and auto land capability. You press a button on the controller, tell it to take off, and it will do such. Set, press that button again, and will automatically land it. Now, let's talk about the camera. There is no SD card slot on this uh, particular drone anywhere. Um, the video is recorded directly to your phone via Wi-Fi only, folks. Also, they're claiming 8K camera on this. This is an interpolated camera. The actual sensor on this, I'm guessing, is around 480p from what I've been seeing. So what it does, folks, when they say 8K it transmits that 480p to your phone and the app automatically enlarges that video, you know, uh, electronically enlarges that video and photos. Uh, the, vi the photos are enlarged to 8K from that 480p sensor and the videos are enlarged to 1080p from that 4K sensor. It's not going to make them look any better. They're still going to look 480p. It's just going to be much larger file size <laughs> on your computer or phone. So just keep that in mind. That's a marketing ploy. Most of these toy drums do do that. I don't know why they do it, but they do it. So keep that in mind. It's not true 4K. It's not true 8, 8K. It's around 8, 480p, maybe 720p. I'm not quite sure which actually, but it's somewhere in between there. Now, I mentioned it's recorded to your phone via Wi-Fi. It does that using the KYUFO app available on Play and, and uh, the Apple App Store. You can get that uh, particular app. That app enables you to record video to your phone and also view the FPV video directly on your phone. Uh, that's why this uh, controller is here. So you can see what the drone is seeing while in flight. Now, the range on that is only 30, about 30 meters, folks. So you're not going to be doing long distance flying with this toy drone. Okay, you're not doing going to be doing cinematic photography with this drone. It's just a learn to fly drone with a cheap camera on the front for beginner pilots. So don't you know, expect in this price range, I, I think this is about $35 with the camera, uh, to be able to do that. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention about that optical flow sensor, that only comes with the camera version, okay? There's a cheaper $19 version without cameras. Um, that does not have the optical flow, so keep that in mind if you were hoping for that optical flow sensor. You need to get this drone with the um, camera version only. Now, the KY UFO app also has additional um, features on it that allows you to do uh, to fly the drone itself with your phone uh, using gravity sensor or virtual joysticks. There are also some other features of this drone uh, you, that you can fly with the app. There's like a um, poor man's waypoint where you slide your finger on the screen and the drone will fly off in that general direction. But those are kind of gee whiz items. So don't go depending on those either as being something uh, cool or <laughs> <laughs> nice to use. I recommend using the controller, folks. <clears throat> Stick with the controller. You you run into problems when you use an app. So I, I have always run into problems when I try to fly the drone with an app. Okay, I've always crashed the drone. So the controller is the best way to go. Now let's talk about that controller. It is powered by three AAA batteries. I can't get in them right now because they're held in place by a little screw there. I guess that's a requirement in some countries to if you got batteries, you have to screw them in so kids don't can't get a hold of them. Now let's talk over the features on this. It has an on-off switch right here, which lights up the controller or the carrying case if you want to look, you know, show off at it, show it off at night with the drone inside. It does such. Other buttons on this. This button here is for rates. You can make the drone fly faster or slower by pressing this button here. This button here is for flips. You can tell the drone to flip right or left, back or right or back by pressing that button here and then moving the controller in the direction of flip. Um, you can start or start and stop the video by holding down this particular button here and you can also take a photo by pressing this button here quickly. Um, this button here activates headless mode and turns it on and off. This is automatic takeoff and automatic landing and this button here you can do calibrate the drone's gyros by a quick press of that button here and you can also turn lights on and off on the drone by a long press of this button here, okay, and it turns off the lights on the controller. <laughs> Maybe it's the lights on the controller that turns off. <laughs> so, okay, let's turn that off. So that is the JJRC H111. Let's go over what you get in the package. You get the instruction manual. It's actually a well-done instruction manual. I, I, you know, it's readable. It's in Chinese and English. You get the um, instruction manual for the KYUFO app. You get a spare set of screws and a spare set of propellers in case you need to change any of these propellers if they get damaged. And here's a screwdriver to do such. 
you get one or two batteries depending on if you purchase that extra battery and you get the battery charger this is the battery charger um, it can be charged in your computer or using a wall charger via U USB um, and it has standard white low C connector on the front of that so that's the battery charger for it you get a nice little carrying case that actually holds the display case and all of these features inside this little box here and you get a spare you get a full set of uh, prop guards um, these prop guards for, are, can be installed or are installed on the bottom and on the top to fully protect these propellers from little fingers that might get in there. So that's nice in itself. So that is the JJRC H111. I am already down in my basement here. Let's take it for a flight and see how it performs. Hope you enjoy this flight. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here. and Welcome to the Quadcopter 101 indoor test drive facility and flight test facility, as you see my test drive facility over there of the test flight of the JGRC H111. Now notice folks, I only put uh, prop guards on the bottom of this particular drone. I tried to install the top on there and they're very difficult to get the pins in. So <laughs> um, these bottom prop guards should be enough to prevent uh, banging into walls, I'm hoping. We'll find out when we fly this here shortly. Okay, to start this up, there's a little start on off button on the top. I got the battery inserted all the way. You press and hold it for about two seconds until you see the lights coming on. Then you can place it on a flat level surface, like right there, and then turn on the controller, and then move the stick, the throttle stick, up and down to connect the controller to the drone. Now we are connected to the drone with the controller. Now I got to connect the Wi-Fi signal from the drone to my phone. So I'm going to open up my drone's uh, Wi-Fi settings and look for the drone's Wi-Fi signal and connect to it, and then I'm going to open the app. So hold on while I do that, folks. Okay, this is the KY UFO app available on uh, Google Play and also on the App Store. And notice you can connect to the Wi-Fi using the app only. Okay, now notice there's a little bit of gnats flying around. That's because of my pepper plants over here that I've been wintering. So if you see little gnats flying around, that's that. Okay, we're going to hit start. And we should have the FPV video from the drone in. The FPV video feed is showing from the drone. I'm going to hit record right there we can also start recorded on off using the controller but i'm using the app right now to, and let's try that automatic takeoff first off and we're going to see how well the um optical flow system works so here we go pressing one okay let's see if it's moving it's drifting it's drifting to the right so let's land that thing and what we're going to do folks with that in mind is we're going to press this calibration and hopefully that will correct the error with it. Let's try it one more time and see how the optical flow system is working. Is it drifting? It's, it's still drifting, folks. Let's see if it stops. Well, there you go. <laughs> it stopped. It drifted to the left and then stopped. Let's turn it to the right and push forward a bit. Let's see if it works again. Coming down a little lower. So the optical flow works. It just for takeoff, it does. It had a little problem there at takeoff. But let's come over, turn it around, point it toward me, and say, How do you like my beer belly? No, <laughs> my shirt today, folks. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so there we go. It's hopping around a bit. Now, one thing I want to try is that flip feature. I'm going to go a little, a little bit lower because I don't want to hit the ceiling right about there and then tell it to flip. Oh, that does nice flips. Right flip. Coming back toward us. Yeah, let's try a forward flip. And going forward. And let's try a back flip. Okay, so flips work on this quite well. Let's see how maneuverability it is. Or, how maneuverable it is. Let's, what did I just hit? Oh, I hit headless mode. <laughs> okay, let's try headless mode. Bringing it back. Headless mode's activated. Turning it to the right and pushing forward. Uh, headless mode's not activated. Let's turn it on again. Okay, maybe I got... Oh, that's starting to stop in video. I'm sorry, folks. Uh, headless mode is that auto button. Okay, headless mode is now operating. Okay... That's forward, that's back. And let's go a bit higher and let's pirouette. So in headless mode, you can pirouette the drone. <laughs> you can fly forward, backward, don't matter. 
That's forward, this is back, right, left. So you can pirouette with headless mode. Um, I'm coming back out of that though, because I don't want to fly any more headless mode. That's enough of that. There I am again over here. Okay, let's go around the stanchion, see how well it flies in terms of uh, maneuverability. Going around the stanchion. And this is in first rate. Let's go to higher rate. Second rate. Maneuverability in second rate. Third rate. Quite maneuverable in third rate. Okay. Okay, landing. <laughs> okay, ducks. It's behind me now. Let me put it back on the pad. Now, whenever you have a little crack up like that, I recommend that you do use that um, calibration button, if I can remember which it was, which is right there, and recalibrate your gyros. Okay, notice I lost my, um, let me get it. I lost one of my prop guards, which were not screwed on. And there we go. Now these prop guards are attached. They're simply held in place. I was looking for screw settings. I guess I guess you can screw them on right through there. There's a little screw hole right there. So that's what those extra screws are probably for. Um, I just got them held in place by friction, holding them up like that. So there we go. Back on the pad. And we should be good to go again. So let's take it back to the air. Let's go change the rates. Okay, and right now, I somehow... I turned on control using virtual joysticks. I don't want to do that. So we're back in rate one. And automatic takeoff button is that one there. One more time. So let's go around again. Now this headless mode, or not headless mode, this optical flow on this. Um, I don't know. <laughs> okay, I'm letting go of the sticks right now. Let's see if it holds. Okay, I can see me. How do you like my shirt today, folks, by the way, if I didn't say that already? Okay, it's holding its position. Um, when you get it moving, though, it will drift a bit, okay? Let's try that, turning it, putting it up again higher, and let's go slowly around the stanchion this time. Let me go. let go of the stick. Let's see if it holds its position over there. And, well, yeah, I guess it's kind of holding position. It is holding its position. Except that altitude hold is not. <laughs> the altitude hold is going up and down quite a bit. Okay, let's go back over here. Show me again. And going around again one more time. Let's go clock or clockwise around the stanchion. Come on over here. Okay, altitude hold. Let's see how well you hold. <laughs> I gotta keep adjusting the altitude, folks. Uh, the altitude hold is a little bit off on this, but I guess it is working. <laughs> so, okay, now we're noticing we're seeing battery flashing already. Um, so the, the battery power is not 20 minutes. I don't think that's 20 minutes, but let's go over it right now. Um, Mine's it drifted to the right. <laughs> okay, um, all in all, it's a beginner's learn to fly drone. The camera is not 8K. Okay, don't. Don't get yourself excited that you're going to get a true 8K camera on this. I'm letting it go up. You know, I'm, it's going up and down with that altitude hold on that. So you can see there is some variation in the altitude hold on this. Um, overall, though, you know, it's a beginner's drone. Learn to fly drone uh, with a camera just to give you the gee whiz experience of FPV flying. I can see what I'm, you know, what's on the screen right now. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's it. So, you are seeing what the drone's seeing in real time. Uh, but other than that, it's a beginner's drone. <laughs> Mainly for indoor flying, I guess. I'm going to try it outdoors if we do get a day, but I really... <laughs> it's, it's winter here, folks, and Erie, PA has got a lot of snow out there and wind, and it's, it's not appropriate day to be flying this. So, mainly for indoor flying anyways, this little bird here. So, let's keep flying it until that battery does deplete finally. But it's telling me it's low already. But we'll continue flying until it does land itself or drop. <laughs> so we'll find out what it does. Does it land or does it drop? Back and forth. 
Does it land or does it drop? Want to ride in low rate? Yeah, most of this flight was in low rate, so it shouldn't be a problem regarding the battery. But blink, 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 blink. Yeah, that that battery warning comes on a bit early, doesn't it? Because this seems to have a lot of flight time left on it. Let me go to higher rate. Oh, 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 there we go. That's its flight time, folks. So, let me go over on my knees. <laughs> Pick it up, and we'll talk about it real quick. Okay, the JJRC H111. Beginners learn to fly drone um, with optical flow. Optical flow does work, but it, you know, it does slide around a bit sometimes, especially if you're maneuvering. It, it doesn't kick in right away. It takes a few seconds for it to to kick in and once it does it holds its position um you can see the fpv video the fpv video works uh it's not a true 8k camera uh keep that in mind it's only about 420 480p i'm guessing well 720p i'll call it 720p that's been interpolated electronically enlarged to higher sensor rating so oh no cute looking drone i like its display case so i <laughs> hope you enjoyed this flight this is quadcopter 101 quadcopter 101 let me hold it up higher. I'm sure it's you haven't even seen the drone. <laughs> this is Quadcopter 101 signing out. Hi, Quadcopter 101 here again. Hey, if you want to get your own shout out in one of my future videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's real simple. Just go to my channel page and click on that subscribe. And also make sure to click that bell button right next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I release a brand new video immediately and give you a chance to get that first shout out. So give it a try, folks. Thank you.